Welcome to example number eight. We have a mass m attached to a light string, making a simple pendulum, release at an angle theta, so that the angle theta, by the way, we'll assume is less than 15 degrees. And it comes down and strikes this big block, let's say a styrofoam block. However, both of these masses are the same. And then they both stick to each other, and they are attached, this block is attached to a spring, and then it oscillates back and forth. So we're asked to find how long would it take for the block uh, for this to come down here, hit this block, and then fully compress the spring. That's part A. And then part B is asking for what is the amplitude of the spring oscillation. So how much does this get compressed? So let's do part A. So the time that it takes to go from here then to here, would, we would have to break this up into two pieces. We have really the time one, we'll call, and time two. Time one would be the time for this pendulum to go all the way down to here. So that's really uh, the time of a pendulum, but divided by four. Why is that so? Because one period is going there and all the way back. Hopefully you realize if you release it from this spot and then come down just to equilibrium, that's only really one amplitude, which is a quarter of the period. Then these two blocks are connected together and then they get pushed into the right. And again, one complete oscillation would be there and then back and then back to the middle again. So that would be one entire, say, sine curve here. But really, we're only going from the middle here to maximum compression, which is, again, a quarter of the period, a quarter of a period for a spring system. So where we remember, hopefully, that the formula for a pendulum is 2 pi square root L divided by G, and we're going to do a fourth of that. And the period for a spring mass system is 2 pi square root of M over K, and that's divided by Four. However, there's a little small mistake I made. When they're oscillating, really there are two masses combined here. So really this should be a two underneath here because it's a, they're combined, they're in an elastic, inelastic collision here, and they're both oscillating together. So that's it for your answer A. I suppose you could you know, simplify it a little bit and write pi over two and then brackets L over G plus the square root of 2M over K. Okay, now we go on to part B. Part B is trying to find the amplitude of oscillation. So first thing we need to do is find out how fast this block is going to, this little pendulum is going to hit this big block here. So we need to use conservation of energy. So we're going to start off with the potential energy that the pendulum has here initially is converted into kinetic energy down below, one half mv. We'll just call that initial squared. The mass of the pendulum is, is canceled out. And so the initial velocity uh, squared is equal to uh, uh, 2 times g times h. But we've got to find h. So h is this distance right in here, but we want it in terms of L and M and K, all the, our final equations, so we can't have an h. So how do we find out h? Well, we know that when this swings down here, this length all the way down here is L. And then this distance in here, we could determine right here, we'll just call that, I suppose, y. So um, we're going to rewrite h as the total length of the pendulum, L, minus this distance, Y, where Y is given as, well, if you look at the trig ratio uh, that involves theta, L, and Y, we would have to use cosine theta, which is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So Y equals L cosine theta. So let's replace that into here, L cosine theta. And so h equals L brackets 1 minus cosine theta. So therefore, the initial velocity is equal to the root of 2GL brackets 1 minus cosine theta. 
Okay, one step closer. Now we need to look at the completely inelastic collision of the pendulum with this block. So we're going to use conservation momentum now. So momentum initially equals momentum finally. We have the momentum of the little block, which is m times that initial velocity velocity that we've just found out vi, plus the initial momentum of that, which is zero, so I'm not going to include it. And then the momentum together just before they start to compress the spring. So this is going to be a 2m, because they're both combined, with this final velocity vf. OK, so now we can replace in our equation here. We have m. Well, I guess the m's cancel out. So we have the square root of 2gl brackets 1 minus cosine theta on the left side. And then we have 2 times the final velocity. So the final velocity would be equal to this expression 2gl 1 minus cosine theta and divided by 2. I suppose I could simplify this, but I'll just leave it as it is here now. And now the last part is then this system of two bodies that has now kinetic energy is then turned into a elastic potential energy. So we're going to go back to conservation of energy. The kinetic energy that it has is turned into spring potential energy. So we have one half times, well, there's two of them together. So it's 2m times that velocity final square that we had just right here is converted into spring potential energy, 1 half k, we'll call it a squared because we're looking for the amplitude. I suppose we can cancel out this 2 here, and we could substitute in our final velocity, m, v final squared, so it's uh, the root of 2 gl1 minus cosine theta, divided by 2 quantity squared, equals 1 half k a squared. Now getting rid of the brackets, and then some cancellations. And solving for A, we'll get the following expression. And that's it for this example.